Green Cooling scores with the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. Hello, good evening and welcome. It's midweek again, which means it's time for the 13 Pro-Am Community Rugby League Show. My name's Dave Parkinson and I'm pushing the buttons and making sure that I'm sounding something like it's none other than me old mocker. Steve Each, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing fine, thanks, Park. You don't sound like Barry White this week. I know. What's happened? Do you not have your, your number one never materialised? Yeah, well, only a number one on the top of the head, <laughs> you know. But uh, that was for another reason entirely. Car trouble, you know, and I think that I can speak for a, a number of people when I said it's quite a stressful experience when you've not got your vehicle available to well, you for a couple of days. Just shows you how much we rely on them, mate, doesn't it? I felt like my legs have been chopped off, to be fair. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's another story entirely. So we're back for the 13 Prime Community Rugby league show slightly different show this week because we uh, we don't have any interviews yes i'm so sorry about that folks and i'm so sorry if you're feeling like we're not doing doing the uh, the, the due diligence that seems to be the word at the That's moment the, isn't it? the due the diligence yeah. you know on, on sort of like putting the work i was in but uh, uh, sometimes these things cross up don't speaking they? of due diligence though yes. Mark, i had to laugh at the weekend uh, obviously, Super League started, and every match is on Sky. So oh, yeah, 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 through yeah. everything, and obviously it's on BBC. Okay, yeah, which is which is great. I, um, that's one of the, the the big things. I'm glad to see it's on, that at least it's on terrestrial television. I was glad it was on Channel Four. Shame they've not been able to keep it, but nevertheless, it's it's still getting heard to a lot of people. Obviously, the game came on, and he was on the right, our old friend Ashton Goulding. I'm thinking. This time last week, Parky was stood in front of him doing this exactly same thing. It just shows you how, how the the reach we have on this show, doesn't it? It certainly <laughs> does, doesn't it? Maybe I'll get on BBC before too long, but never mind. <laughs> it's got to be said, though. He's very good, isn't Harry, isn't he? No, he is. He's excellent. Mm. You know, As I say, he... he he is one of the most enthusiastic people involved in rugby league today, I believe. And uh, it, it is great to sort of hear him. Uh, and of course, it was a special weekend for him as well. 150 professional games. So that's a, that's a great milestone, isn't yeah, it, for Ashton? Yeah. I sent him a little message on Twitter as well saying, here's to 150 more. And then he'll play about 400 for standing, they won't, before he quits. Uh, knowing him, yes, he <laughs> certainly will. Um, so, yes, so... Um, we're looking forward to this coming weekend. Big Challenge Cup game, Steve. We're over at York Acorn. Really looking forward to heading over uh, to Acorn, by the way. It's going to be fantastic, isn't it? Do you know what? We, we were coming back, weren't we, from, from the game, from the Stanley Watson Brow game, which we obviously commentated on. And on the drive back, uh, we were looking at the results. And we, we saw this game and we both said, oh, we hope that one's not on TV. Then we can go and uh, hopefully uh, commentate on it. And thinking, fingers crossed, the rugby league gods have said yes. That's that's fine. Off you go, Steve. Off you go, Dave. <laughs> yeah. So I can't wait, and yeah. uh, it'll be your first visit, though, won't it? It will. Yeah. And it's yeah. a cracking little venue, to be fair. Um, you know, and uh, a great place to watch your community rugby league. I think you're going to enjoy it. And I'm just enjoying getting to all these different venues that I've never been before. Obviously, uh, at uh, when at the end of last season, when we, we started doing this venture from uh, from the commentary point of view, and we went out to uh, uh, a, a couple of clubs uh, on the other, well, just on the foot of the Pennines. Yeah, we went to Water, and we oh. went to Saddleworth, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, and both great clubs, lo- lovely venues of of where they actually were, uh, and all the others we've been to since have, have not disappointed. No, no, there's some great places to go yeah. and watch your community rugby league. And I implore you, if you haven't been to some of these grounds, check them out this season. So if you're listening to us from the first time and you're thinking, you know what? I'm fed up of all these eye tackles in Super League. I'm absolutely fed up of my players who I support getting banned mm. for maybe tipping people on the reds or not, as the case may be. Well, why don't you get yourself along to, uh, you know, a Wigan St. Pat's or a Lee Miners or, um, you know, a Leyland or, you know, a Hindley or uh, you, you name it. Give me a few others. Yeah. A couple of other ones at me. Well, just basically look at where you are and look for your <laughs> closest community rugby club and get out there and get it watched. Because the interesting thing is all the, all the whining that Super League clubs are doing at the moment about uh, the rules and regulations, all these new rules, etc. I think you find a lot of those have actually been around and are just being enforced more but the one you will see if you go and watch the community game this season is obviously the introduction of the new high saddle or 
the, the penalty against the high tackle that goes above the armpits and that is going to be really interesting mm. Uh, it is, it is, yeah. We'll wait and see what yeah. comes. Uh, uh, Twitter could be an absolute, sorry, X. It could be X. X, X it could X be X rated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> X rated. Right, okay, so we've got, we've had a number of pre season friendlies that have taken place over the course of the past weekend. So I'll run you through some of the results, tell you a little bit about the game, shall I? So Wigan St. Jude's dominated Lee Miners Rangers in the Gary McMahon Memorial Trophy. They won by 24 points to four in the end, and they had tries from Connor Parkinson, no relation, <laughs> uh, Reese McNally. Brogan Turner, Nante Morley Samuels and Joey Brady. Um, they sealed the victory for Saints. Got to say with Dante Morley Samuels, uh, I'm really glad that he's back playing community oh. rugby league again. Or rugby league full stop. Yeah. Um, I, I'm looking forward to when we get to see Wigan St. Jude's because he is a standout player. Yeah. He's got flame red hair. Absolutely brilliant. He's, he's, you know, he's flowing red locks unless he shaved him off, of course. Oh. <laughs> um, but he was a, a fine player coming through. I remember seeing him, first of all, when he was an under-19s player for Lancashire back yeah. in the Barley days. Um, tremendous, tremendous player. He's, he's spent a little bit of time in the pro ranks as well with North Wales Crusaders over recent seasons. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm really pleased to see him back playing community rugby league. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this because, obviously... Um, I, 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 I knew Gary. Yeah. Uh, I, I knew what an influence he was at both clubs. I mean, he spent many years at Wigan St. Jude's, um, was a, an excellent servant for them, probably had some involvement in a lot of those players that are now playing open ages, uh, career um, or formative years, if you like. Um, and then, although his stint with Lee Miners Rangers was a lot shorter he made a massive impact there yeah. as well. You yeah. know, a great, great guy. Uh, I am so pleased that his name is being honoured uh, and hopefully will be continued to be honoured for years to come in this, uh, you know, memorial trophy. Uh, I think it's the right thing yes. to do. I think it's fantastic that both clubs have agreed it. Um, and I'm fully behind anything which helps to uh, remember people that are sadly are no longer with us. Yeah, I totally agree. The the bottom line, and, and you know my my stance on this park if we, with friendlies and things at the beginning of the season. You know, the players have got to get miles in the legs, haven't they, to, mm -hmm. to a certain degree. And and if you're playing for something, the games are, no, it doesn't matter what it is, if there's something on the line, it's always much more competitive. And when you get the emotion and everything that's around th this, this type of game, then you'll get a more competitive game. And... The bottom line is that shows what the community rugby league is is all about. The, the toughness on the pitch, the camaraderie of it, and and the, you know the respect and th thankfulness for what people have done, you know, for others over over the years. Uh, Luke Holland, by the way, grabbed the try for Lee Miners Rangers. Uh, a friend of the show, Danny Cassidy, popped up with a goal oh, as well Danny. for St Jude's. Good to hear he's him got back a in the action as well. Yeah, yes, he yes. Is, he is. I don't think there's much that he can't do. To be honest, on a rugby field. Uh, now, Dewsbury at Moor Maroons. This time last week, they were hunting around for a friendly. Up came the arms of our good friends at Thato Heath Crusaders. Says we'll host you for a game. So Dewsbury Moor Maroons. They fought back from an early deficit to defeat Thato Heath Crusaders by 16 points to 12. Jake Butterfield scored a brace for the Maroons, while James Sam also crossed the line um, bit of a mixed side this to be honest as far as Tato were concerned they did have a few players that will um, probably feature a little bit more for yeah. the the A team you know but even so that's impressive from Jewsby Moore isn't it yeah. you'll be new to Division 1 this year yeah definitely I mean for starters you know I've got to say a big thank you all on, on behalf of that so with Crusaders stepping in there but that's the sort of club they are aren't they at the end of the day uh, it means the guys all get a game manage to get a game because like we've said and again uh, there's nothing worse than cancel fixtures if you're a player because mm -hmm. you, you, you've trained all week you've You've, you've, you know, you've worked your way up. You've made arrangements to be able to get there at, you know, at, at, uh, at the weekend. You know, you've had the nod. Yes, obviously you can go, no problem. And then there's no game. Then you've got to wait another week for the next game and go all through the same thing. So it, 
the, it, it's an anti-climax, isn't it? Uh, and so, yeah. Uh, and I know it's only a pre-season friendly, but they are, you know, to, to a lot of teams, they are important. They are. I mean, it gets mm. you on a, it gets you on a front foot, doesn't and, it? And it's good. And I think what Tato did is, is correct. I think everybody needs to get miles in the legs. It doesn't matter really if you're the first team. The thing is, if you've got a player who needs to come into the first team, early doors on of the season for some reason whatsoever, then it's important that they're up to speed, as it were. OK, uh, also a result to tell you about. Impressive one, this one, by the way. Uh, so, as we've spoken about, I suppose, quite broadly on this show over the last couple of years, we've we've almost presided over um, Pilkington Rex heading in the wrong direction mm. as far as league positions go. Uh, and they're hoping for a much, much better season this time round. They were taking on Ince Rose Bridge at the weekend, uh, and they won. By 20 points to 16. That's quite a good win, that, that to be honest. Win, yeah. And, you know, from hearing the reports on the game, it sounds like they got to grips a lot more with, uh, as you were saying, the, uh, the the tackle height. Yeah. Quite yeah. a lot more than what Ince Rose Bridge did. It's early days, as we, and I'm sure we'll see loads and loads of penalties, to be fair. But let's take you through it. So in the first half, uh, Pilks... They scored several tries. So Jonathan Key scored after just two minutes. Ben O'Connell converted. Callum Derrick followed up just a couple of minutes later. Ben O'Connell again added the extras. And then after 11 minutes, the effervescent Luke Riley went in for a try. That was all she wrote for the first half. 16 points nil and all the points scored after six, after 11 minutes. Sorry, what a, what a first half that is. What a start to the game. So uh, you got your value there if you were down there watching that one, were you? Uh, then in the second half, uh, Ince came back. Uh, Brody Butler, who we know from also playing for the uh, Royal Navy. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and trialling for the England Community mm-hmm. Lions, you know. So he, um, he went in for a try. Jack Morrison, who we've spoken about on the show before. Big barrel-chested prop forward. Love seeing him play, by the way, for an intro bridge. I'm sure the bulk of bridges that will be listening to us also are happy that he's still pulling on an inch, uh, an inch jumper. He went in for a try after 47 minutes. Ben Cottrell converted. Then, just after the hour mark, my good friend Harry Penny. We, we do we do like Harry. Great mm-hmm. lad, great lad. Played of course for the um the class of twenty twenty two for the England Community Lions under nineteens, which won the European Championships mm-hmm. by the way. And also served the Lions well last year for the under twenty threes as well. Uh, he went over for a try. Ben Cottrell converted and then Alex Fitzhenry scored right at death to uh, to win the game. But yeah, absolutely fantastic game. Um, I'm, I'm well played, by the way, to both both of those sides. Uh, back on, uh, I'm going to mention about Heweth. So they cruised to a 24-4 victory over Skirla, thanks to a dominant first half. George Tang scored two tries for the hosts, while Jack Sadler and Harrison Briggs also crossed all names which we uh, commentated on a little bit earlier on in the season uh, in the Challenge Cup, didn't we? Now, Thornhill Trojans, they've gone on a similar downward trajectory over the last few years, Mm. sadly, as uh, Pilkington Rex. But times they could be a changing it's not just a case of Bob Dylan singing that maybe Thornhill Trojans will be singing it by the season's end they were too strong for the Almondbury Lions winning by 38 points to 6 Joel Gibson starred he is a real real player Joel Gibson fantastic he's been with Thornhill for a good number of years um, recently been picked in the uh, uh, train on squad for the England Community Lions Open Age which yeah. we'll, we'll we'll tell you a little bit more, more about that later um, he started with two tries and five goals for the Trojans while Ollie Bucock, Sam Ratcliffe and Travis Lum also touched down Beverly, meanwhile, they held on for a narrow 12-10 win against Mighton Warriors. Both of those sides um, had their moments last season, mm-hmm. but also had their troubles as well. Josh Poskett converted tries from Tom Burnett and Dan White to give Beverly the edge there in a real narrow pip squeak of a victory. Um, and that's all I've got with regards to that. Now, the Oldham Standard Cup as well reached its semi-final stage at the weekend, and uh, it's going to be a case of 
as we were. So last season, Rochdale, Mayfield and Waterhead fought their way through to the final. It's that same clash again, you know. But it's always a good one, isn't it? You know what I mean? So the Warriors, they're in the decider, which has returned to Boundary Park after several years at Oldham Rugby Union Club, um, courtesy of a 28 points to 6 win over Salworth Rangers, while Mayfield prevailed by 32 points to 4 at Oldham St. Anne's. Uh, a key figure for Waterhead, by the way, was former Oldham player Matthew Fogarty, who, now at 31 years of age, romped him for a hat-trick. Uh, but yeah fantastic victory that and a little bit of something here I'm wondering whether uh, so I'm going to I'm going to already chuck it over to the uh, uh, the organisers of the Oldham Standard Cup do you fancy getting your game covered on Mixler because it's happening on Easter Saturday March the 30th that's a, an early kick off of 11.45 mm. we'll, we'll ask the question and see whether or not that's available and why not, why not? Uh, and it's going to be held at Boundary Park mm. well, that's even more impressive, isn't it? That that venue. So uh, fantastic to hear more about that. Um, and I think that's all the all the news I've got to fix. Just unless you've got anything else to no, that I I fixed did, out. That that was the main ones I think that uh, were floating about. There wasn't a great deal as you were saying earlier on. Uh, one thing that I also want to do as well is to look forward to this weekend's Challenge Cup ties. Okay, so we still have some community game involvement so i'm just going to concentrate on those ties in front of us uh, so on saturday hammersmith hills hoists make the long trek up to halifax panthers for a 5 p.m kickoff mm. uh, that, that's going to be a toughie isn't it for hammersmith hills hoists that's a strange time for it to kick off, bearing in mind that it's not the World Club Championship not on on Saturday as well. It is, but that's an 8 o'clock kick-off. It's still, so, it's yeah. still, even so, it's still still tight, isn't it? I mean, I presume everybody will be in the uh, the clubhouse afterwards watching it. <laughs> Potentially, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, can you imagine them doing a bit of a... But yeah, it's uh, uh, it's going to be a tough one there from Amersmith Hills. Always. But as we've said, with a, a lot of these community sides, we get... It, you know, took this far and are playing professional opponents is enjoy the day, make the most of it and, and just go out there and do the best you can. It's a great experience mm. for them, isn't it? And a real chance to, to, to really put their club on the map, which they've done already, haven't mm. they, with the performances so far in the Challenge Cup. So uh, go well, Hammersmith, Hills, Hoist. Nothing against you, of course, Halifax and any Halifax fans listening. Uh, but obviously, we're all for the community boys, aren't we? Uh, then there's the game that we're at. Two o'clock kickoff over at York Acorn against Wathbrow Hornets. Both of these sides with history of Challenge Cup upsets now. Mm. Uh, so, uh, we mentioned last week York Acorn became the 34th professional, or the 34th side to beat uh, semi-professional opposition since it became a regular occurrence for community clubs to be entering the Challenge Cup on a more regular basis. Uh, that was back in 93-94. Now, funnily enough, another side that has done particularly well at that, at that has been Wathbrow Hornets. I wanted to look at, at some of the sides that have really produced the upsets down the years, if I may, Steve. So, um, you know already that my uh, I've got some good friends at West Hull. Yeah. Uh, we know what a fantastic club they are. They're on this list. So they beat Highfield in 1996 by 35 points to 20. And then they only went and beat York again in the next round, didn't they? 10 points to 6. I mean, that's a phenomenal effort, isn't it? To not just beat one semi professional team, but to knock another one out in yeah. the same cup run. Uh, now, the year after, York have appeared on this list a couple of times, unfortunately. So, sorry, York fans. Uh, Dudley Hill beat York by 21 points to 14. And uh, uh, it'd be remiss of me not to mention Beverly being the first club, also defeating Highfield, 1995, this score, by the way, by 27 points to 4. Uh, Thato Heath, they defeated Charlie in 96 by 27 points to 12. Ellenborough Rangers... Uh, defeated Bramley in 1997 by 16 points to 10. Featherstone Lions are on this list as well. They knocked Doncaster out in 1998. Egremont defeated Workington. They didn't just defeat them, they nailed them as well, by the oh. way. 18 points to nil. That's impressive, isn't it? If you're it's a community is, yeah. side. Um, who else is on this list? 
good old Lee Miners Rangers. They knocked Bramley out in 1999 by 18 points to 12. And I think a certain Alan Coleman played in that one. I did. For Lee Miners yeah. Rangers. I'm sure he did. I need to go and ask him just to confirm. But I, I don't think I'm telling tales out of school there. Uh, and then the 2000 competition... This produced a, a couple of great results. So Oldham St. Anne's beat Batley by 10 points to nil. And Thornhill Trojans knocked out Sheffield by 16 points to 14. Now, I know that Sheffield reformed in this yeah, whole period. Yeah. But bear in mind, a couple of years earlier, they were beating Wigan at Wembley, weren't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. it just shows how, how, how things change and how uh, you know performances can come about in rugby league. Then there was a couple of fallow years where we didn't see that many upsets. Wollstone upset Charlie by 22 points to 8. Wathbrow beat Workington. They're on the, appearing on this list for a second time I wonder how many that game don't know because what's Brown Workington whoa I mean you, that's couple a beaut that isn't it yeah a couple that's of a, close uh, close like neighbours Tatter with against Saints isn't it it is yeah 13 points to 12 was that by the way <laughs> I, I'm just wishing I'd seen some of these games now <laughs> looking at these results Halton Sims Cross they also beat London Scholars by 15 points to 8 that set up because uh, Halton Sims Cross they went on quite a good run mm. if I uh, believe rightly um, because I think that year they played against Wigan uh, and had that game where they led by three points to two after about ten yeah, minutes because yeah. someone snapped the picture of the scoreboard there at the um, the DW Stadium um, let's have a look at some more of these there's a few upsets in 2004 Charleston beat Dewsbury for example 30 points to 28 Dudley Hill were again in the winner's circle, defeating Keithley, 16 points to 14. And East Hull knocked Swinton out by 26 points to 14. 2005, Wathbrow's on this list again, knocking out Poor Dewsbury, 32 points to 30. Thornhill beat Workington, 2006, by 16 points to 12. Wathbrow beat London Scholars in 2009. Uh, Siddle defeated Doncaster 26-0 in 2010. Wow. Uh, and then there was Lee Miners Rangers defeating Oxford. Remember them in the semi-pro ranks? Oxford, yeah. Yeah, they had a couple of years. They defeated them by 32 points to six. I was at that game. Uh, Miners were tremendous. And in fact, in that year, 2015, they won the domestic treble. Yeah. So everyone was commenting about Leeds Rhinos winning the treble in as far as you know the uh, professionals were concerned. Yeah. I don't think enough was made about Lee Miners Rangers winning that treble that year. It was historic for the club. Um, then there was a fantastic run in 2016. Get this for a run of results, okay? So Featherstone Lions beat South Wales by 37 points to 20. Kells beat Hemel by 12 points to 6. Pilkington Rex beat London Scholars by 13 points to nil. That was a game I remember reporting on that yeah. for the, uh, uh, the no, no longer around uh, League Weekly. Uh, Siddle beat Newcastle by 30 points to 4. And Lock Lane defeated Oxford again by 37 points That's to 22. That's a lot, isn't it? That all happened. It was basically over one weekend. Yeah. What a weekend that wow. was. That's when the Challenge Cup was really magical when that year. Uh, then we had to wait another couple of years. Thato Heath defeating North Wales Crusaders in yeah. 2019. 16 points to 14, that score. Uh, 2020 saw Underbank knock out West Wales by 30 points to 8. And then we saw Lock Lane defeat Oldham in 2022. Hunslet Club Parkside, as they were at the time, defeating mm. London Scholars in 2022. And of course, Rochdale Mayfield defeating Cornwall last season by 20 points to 14. And our good friends at York, Acorn, going doing likewise against Cornwall again just a couple of weekends ago. That was a potted history, wasn't it? But it just shows you that it can be done, doesn't it? It can be done. You know? It can yeah. be done. Um, but yeah, I, I like the fact that Wathbrow Hornets are on this list a couple of times. They've got real pedigree, haven't they? But to be fair, I mean, they, they are a strong side. There's no if and buts. I mean, uh, as we spoke to other players, when we spoke about, you know, about what it's like to, you know, go to Wathbrow, well, go to Cumbria to play any Cumbrian team, but they always say Wathbrow's a, you know, sort of a, a hard place to go. It's always a tough game. Uh, no matter where they are, and I think we say every season, Parky, we look at we look at that 
uh, Prem division when the, the fixtures come out. I mean, I always they're the fixtures that we're looking at. You know, there's the, the uh, probably a. I don't know about a top five mm-hmm. that, that we sort of look at, and, and they're the big clashes. And don't get me wrong, it's community rugby league, and anybody can beat anybody on the day because of the vir- virtue of what squad is or what players are going to be playing, because of the matter of fact that you don't always have the availability of your, you know, your, your first seventeen inverted commas. Uh, but in, invariably. I mean, Wasp Brow are always in that mix, aren't they? Always. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I, I, they're, I think I said they're, they're a constant, aren't they, in that mix at the mm. top end of the Premier Division since they got promoted into that league. And and they've had some tremendous players down the years, haven't yeah. they? And it's the same thing because you think, you know, they've been there for absolutely, you know, you think they were the stalwarts of that, of that uh, division, you know what I mean? Uh, because they've done that, you know, they've had that much success in, Invariably. Uh, so uh, there is another community club that's also taking their place in the Challenge Cup. Their tie is on Sunday. They're up against Wakefield Trinity. It's our good friends from Hunslet. Mm. How do you think they're going to fare? Uh, I think they'll they'll, they'll do well. I, I've, I've, I've no doubt about that because they are a good club. Can't see them win them. Even even if it was a home tie, I could couldn't see them win them. Uh, because we we saw what Wakefield were like in the the last round. Uh, the bottom line is that yeah, I, th- I think they'll go well. But like I said before, it's a matter of enjoying the occasion now. Uh, and uh, in just in case you know you want even more rugby league to enjoy, you've got our game that you can listen to on mm-hmm. Saturday. If you want, if you fancy getting a little bit of a, a little bit of a build up. Um, you know, for the uh, World Club Challenge game, uh, then you could listen to us. Or if you're a Huddersfield or a St. Allen's fan and you fancy a bit of a warm up, well, you can come and listen to us on Mix, like I. Yeah, no problem at all. And uh, I think certainly what what I would suggest, uh, certainly for our Cumbrian listeners, listeners who want to have a listen now, what what Brow are doing. You know, uh, as I say, you you can't see it anywhere. Just. Uh, Get on to Mixler and uh, listen to the dulcet tones of myself and Mr. Parkinson here. Uh, and, and and any other club, you're more than welcome. But uh, logically, what I would say, if you can get down to uh, uh, over to the to the game, then then please do so. Because uh, you know the the better the atmosphere, the, the better the game. Yeah, you can't beat being at no, a rugby league at game live, can you? To not be fair, uh, now there are two of these Challenge Cup ties which are also being streamed on Sunday. Uh, so. Uh, it's a clash of the former Cup Titans, Bradford Bulls and Widnes Vikings. That's at half 12 on the BBC iPlayer on Sunday afternoon. And then following that up at 6 o'clock on the Sportsman YouTube channel, it's Swinton Lions against Oldham. Ooh, I can imagine at least one person that's listening in to us uh, will probably be over at that one, Swinton and Oldham. I think he's getting a bit of a soft spot for Oldham. Oh, he is, yeah. Uh, and, and he needs to be of himself, honestly, but that's enough about Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to decide where his loyalties but, lie. <laughs> but, but to be fair, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be an interesting watch Oldham this season, I think. Because obviously Longy in charge there, they've got, a, a, you know, from their point of view, they've got some stars that they've signed. Uh, so you would expect them to, to, to do well so it's it's going to be interesting I think that's what makes it good at the end of the day it's, and I think it's like when we're watching the, the community game we go out and we watch these teams and suddenly now we're seeing players and we're thinking oh I want to see how he goes the rest yeah. of the season you know and every different you know sort of club that we go to uh, there's one or two players that are standing out and that's just in one or two games so you know it's really Oh, really looking forward, really chomping at the best here. Well, we're now going to add to your um, your your spreadsheet here, Steve, because I know you're eagerly a building a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet of spreadsheet. all the players that you come into contact with. It's getting worse than I am, folks, to be <laughs> fair, you know. Um, at least my, mine are sticky notes. 
which have lost the sticky and yeah. uh, you know Highlight. highlighter pens. Got I've got a new pack of highlighters yeah. ready for the new season. This is this is not great for radio, but it's actually holding up a pack of four highlighter pens. And, yeah, and, and you know, you the know, smile and you know what the face is unbelievable. You know what they're called? I doodle. I, I think I quite liked it because it, they're called <laughs> I doodle. That's the only reason that I picked them up. I think I thought, oh, modern, modern Stato. Oh. He's got to have I doodle pens, hasn't he? He's got to have I doodle highlighters. Um, yes. Yeah, so here's some more players for you because. Um, over the last sort of 24 hours, uh, the Young Lions have been announced. So this is the Community Lions Under-19 squad that will go to play in the European Championships later this summer. Uh, now, we're still waiting for the announcements as to where this is going to be played at. Um, but this is the side so calling all rugby league fans the england community lions have selected the under 19 squad hoping to repeat the 2022 championship win later this year these talented 21 players have been chosen after months of trials and fierce competition they come from right across the north of england with lancashire cumbria and yorkshire all well represented there's some familiar faces returning, like Josh Langley and Marcus Gina, who impressed at the under-16s That's level. Right, yeah. Others, like Sam Murta, I spoke to Sam, uh, and unfortunately, just as he was trialling last season, he picked up an injury which ruled him out of contention for the entire season. Did he was absolutely gutted, Ooh. but he's back. He played in the last uh, Red V Blues trial, uh, and he's overcome that injury now. He's charged his way into the squad not forgetting exciting new talents like Devon Sharp and Miller Dalton who are ready to make their mark here's the full squad ready to make the nation roar so we have Alfie Hoff who's made the squad from Hindley Ben Metcalf from Rochdale Mayfield he was the uh, co-captain of the under 18s last season Malachi Price is in that squad from Wigan St Jude's Daniel Knott comes into the squad from Dalton Devon Sharp from Wathbrow Hornets. Dylan Greers from Kells. Look out for him, by the way. He is a chiselled prop forward. Yeah. Um, you know, he's like granite. He's a tough, tough uh, character. Uh, Fletcher Holgate continues the Holgate tradition of representing mm. the uh, England Community Lions. Not only has he now represented them at under 16, under 17 and under 18 level, he's going to the European Championships. Uh, George Jameson comes into the squad from Salford City Roosters. Fletcher Holgate, by the way, representing Hensingham. Oh. Uh, Harry Barker comes into that squad from Waterhead Warriors. And then we have three players from Siddle. Henry Ogden, Jacob Hay and Joe Lewis all getting the nod. One player from West Hull, Jack Lawler. Oh. And then, as previously mentioned, Josh Langley from Blackbrook Royals. Josh Blinkhorn from Millham comes into the squad. Josh Hopkins from Lee East. Marcus Gina from Waterhead, he's done the uh, cross town switch. He was with Saddleworth up until very recently. Uh, Miller Dalton also comes into that squad from Hensington. Sam Murta from Kells. Scott Simmons from Pilkington Rex, formerly of Oral uh, St. James. Uh, and Tom Farron from Roos Pioneers. It's quite a well balanced squad, that. Um, and, and speaks volumes, to be honest, of the strength of the age group because there's a number of players that may have been considered for the tour yeah. and for the tournament, but they can't represent because they have gone into the pro ranks. Ah, well, I mean, that's, so good, it's, that, that's good that's for them, for isn't them. it? You know, it's I, great I, for them, but it also throws up another opportunity for yeah, other players yeah. as well, you know. So all of these guys, they've all played at 17 and 18 level last year. And this is what we say about the, the, these types of squads. Even even going up to the open age, I mean, this is a chance to put yourself in the window as well now, isn't it? You know, you may not have made it lower down. And we've always said everything doesn't happen at the same time. Everybody's not good at the same time. People develop at different times. But to be fair, there's a lot of these guys, they would have been good, but perhaps they've been through or just missed out on scholarships or yeah. because of the locality. There's nobody who's really running scholarships in that area. I'm mm. thinking more of your Cumbrian yeah. clubs. Very, you know, much so. yeah. very much get overlooked. 
you know, yeah. to be to be fair, and still keep producing players. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing how many of these squads that, you know, certainly I've been involved with over the last few years, and also as well, when, when I look at the, the old Bala squad that yeah. went over to Fiji, how many Cumbrians are in there? Yeah. And then they get an opportunity perhaps a little bit later because of the way that well, the it. financial situation is there and the fact that yes. a lot of people end up working for, you know, a couple of the uh, the, the well-sought-after employers that mm-hmm. are in Cumbria. Yeah, and, and it's, that's what's the good thing about these uh, the, these uh, community, England Community Alliance teams is it puts those people back in the shop window, doesn't it? And, and then gives them that chance, which is great. Uh, so really looking forward to seeing how that squad develops. They'll they'll have a number of training sessions together. Uh, there's an introduction day coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and no doubt I'll be all over that story, Steve, uh, trying to speak to some of these guys and, um, you know, put their profile out there a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, like, like we said before, when you interview some of these younger lads, they're really good when you get onto the... Uh, uh, you know the old microphone, and they get get the other ones. It's like pulling teeth, isn't it? Oh, there can be a there can be a <laughs> bit of a combination there, you know. But I'll do my best. I'll do my best, Steve. Um, what about other Lions news, Steve? Well, obviously, also there was there was uh, mentioned was the the squad list for the uh, Open Age Community Alliance. So this is an extended squad at the moment, isn't That's it? Right, Twenty seven yeah. names included on this list. Um, and some names that uh, I've definitely already got a place on your spreadsheet, I believe, Steve. They have, yeah. Well, I'll run through the uh, the squad list that I've got here in front of me, if that's all right, Dave. Yeah. Uh, well, we're kicking off. We've got Elliot Cousins from West Bowling. Uh, Alfie Crawford, who we're going to probably see at the weekend uh, from York Acorn. Uh, Leon Krellin from Egremont Ran- Rangers. Uh, Jake Dearden from Unslit uh, ARLFC. Joel Gibson, uh, Thornal Trojans. Already gave him a good mention in this podcast, haven't we? Yeah, we certainly have, certainly have. Uh, Kieran Glenn, Egremont Rangers. He's a fantastic player, by the way, a real yeah. workhorse, Kieran Glenn. Uh, going back to what we were saying before, Alison Holgate from Wasbrow Hornets. Yep, uh, fantastic. Thomas Horner from Egremont Rangers. Connor McCallum from Siddle. Jack McShane uh, from Unsley. I'd be yeah. surprised if he was missed out. Uh, and Craig McShane. Obviously, uh, from Onslet as well. Uh, Jacob Moore from West Hull. Connor Parkinson. Uh, Got to have a Parkinson uh, parking for you. Yeah. Uh, from <laughs> Wigan St. Jude's. Andy Philbin from Lee Miners. Kieran Prescott. I think we spoke about a few times on the show, haven't we? We have from both the uh, the RAF and uh, Lee East, of course. That's right. Lewis Price from Lock Lane. Danny Rouse, also of uh, Onslet ARLFC. Uh, ben Shulver. Another one who we get mentioned a lot, and uh, again from Onslet, Chris S- uh, Siddons from Lock Lane, uh, Danny Sowerberry from Lock Lane, uh, Matt Stableford from Ulton Rangers, uh, Connor Taylor from Wigan St Pat's, uh, Charlie Tomlinson from Wasp Brow Hornets, again who we we'll see again at the weekend, uh, and Jamie Tracy from Tatooine Crusaders, Robbie Valentine from Intros Bridge. Cole Walker Taylor, Wasp Brow Hornets, and I really am looking forward to seeing him at the weekend. And finally, Dominic Weir from Kells. Uh, again, it, there's there's some competition for places. Mm. There are some really, really good players. You've got the likes of Sowerby who can cover a, a multitude of positions. Prescott's pretty versatile and an effervescent sort of character. Uh, you look in the in the forwards and you've got leadership qualities all over the place through the likes of Kieran Glenn and uh, Ben Shulver, of course, who, who does a tremendous job with Hunslet uh, and Jamie Tracy, of yeah, course, who's been yeah. there and done, done that it, yeah. previously with That's the community line. Yeah. Um, and then you look at some of the other guys um, really pleased to hear Jake Dearden's name in that list by the way yeah. too because he is a he's a fantastically balanced runner uh, and in fact if you go back long enough in his career represented East Leeds yeah same with Alfie Crawford actually yeah uh, so you know so it's good to a couple of old East Leeds boys get the nod in this uh, advanced squad as it is at the moment Um they also have a number of training 
um, days that are ahead of them mm. set between now and later in the season when that squad gets reduced ready to go to Western Australia uh, in October yeah well, I was just going to ask you about that what what it uh, they took it down to what squad size it goes down to was it uh, the did you lose what two or three something like that? I, I think I think they always look to travel with about twenty two, twenty three yeah. players. I, I'll have to double check yeah, on yeah, that though, yeah. and just see because uh, obviously everyone that's in that squad, they're they're available. Yeah, you know, and I would imagine. You know, you never know how a season's going to go with injuries yeah, and things right. like yeah. that. There may yeah. be players that get drafted in. Mm. There may be players that you would have listed every day of the week, and then unfortunately, for whatever reason, work commitments, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they can't make it. So this is why you name sort of an extended squad like what's happened here. Yeah, and they'll be playing three games and also a nine-a-side competition, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward yeah. to seeing how that eventuates. It's quite exciting considering the nines but if you think you know you're going over to uh, Western Australia Perth area yeah. um, and they're going to be travelling over in October so you're just heading between that spring and summer period mm. where you know it starts to be getting a little bit warmer yeah. in Australia perhaps even warmer than it is already so who will they be playing? Uh, well Did again you know? again that itinerary is mm yet to be published uh, and and yet to be made fully available um, as soon as we've got some more news on that yeah. obviously I'm, I can talk about it a lot more you know yeah, it's something that we're going to be building up over the course of the season yeah anyway, what, what, what interests me in that one because obviously Perth isn't a, a, a big rugby league area is it I mean that's that's more <laughs> I, I bet they've still got I bet they've still got so, a thousand yeah. players or so I, registered I for the area and, and the next thing it was going to go on to obviously we saw the uh, New South Wales team uh, oh, the police. The police yeah uh, that, that man, <laughs> were really really good well let's be honest if you play against an australian want, side no matter which part of australia yeah. they're from they're going to be well drilled aren't they? yeah. they're going to be well up to speed with the basics of rugby league uh, they're going to be keen as anything to do the tackling yeah. um and they're not going to want to get beaten by some pommies are they oh no no it's going to, that, that's going to be a real really good uh, competition and as you said the nines that's going to be you know, i'm not a massive lover of nines <laughs> to, to be fair but i think there is a place for it do you know what i mean at, at the end of the day uh and i think this type of thing where you you you, you can give everybody a good run out uh, and a, in a fast place, get paced competition, even the forwards, <laughs> uh, and and also you know sort of from a competition you know a, a point of view that is ideal I think. I, d- I do think it's, it's it's interesting. I've had a couple of my best. Now <laughs> you're talking to a man who's got quite a lot of different rugby league experiences down the years now, and I, this is where I start realising that I'm getting on a bit when I start saying these things. But I had the pleasure of two seasons of doing uh, nine aside. So this was the old Northern Rail Nines, yeah. which took place about 2008, 2009, and 2009, 2010. It was only over two seasons. Yeah, um, One of these short-lived um, competitions that appears in the professional ranks and disappears, never to be spoken of again. But it, it you know, has its own little page and section in the different yearbooks, mm. if you go back long, you know. Um, and... It was it was a really really good experience that because people were available and wanted to talk, mm. um, you know. And I, I've never been in a situation where there's been like twenty teams all in one place. Yeah. Where you know you've you, suddenly everybody's thrust into the midst of it. Yeah. Um, and and okay, some teams were taking it a bit more serious than others. You know, I, I remember Sheffield Eagles having men's a year at the time. Uh, obviously Papua New Guinea yeah, International yeah. Centre who banged everybody you know he was like so good defensively uh, and I, I seem to remember him scoring about six tries against Lee in a yeah. semi-final where I think to be fair Lee might have been um, out on the town enjoying Blackpool the night before uh, but you know the, these things happen don't they and um, I, listen I think it's another fantastic way to, to spread the word of the sport in yeah. fairness and um, uh, no matter who is going to be being played over there it's going to be a challenge isn't well the it? thing is with the nines as well that, like you've just said there's a lot there'll be lots of teams there, uh, that, you know so f- from 
that networking point of view that we always talk about. That's great for these guys to be able to speak and talk to other guys like we did when we sat down with all the New South Wales police. Yeah. The, the information that we found out about them just from sitting down there for about an hour or so talking to them, you know, the, the, this type of thing is that these guys will be able to sort that information in, watch how the games are played, watch how different players play, and, and, and hopefully come back with, you know, some. I'm not saying extra enthusiasm. I'm sure they're enthused anyway about the possibility of going over there. But to to be able to do that, it just you know you, you you're getting a lot more you're getting a lot more bang for your buck, aren't you? In, in that sort of sense. And, and these overseas trips, they don't come around that often no. at open age level. No. You know, you go yeah. back a you go back a few years, and I think the open age squad went over to New Zealand mm-hmm. about four years ago now. Uh, maybe even five years ago, yeah. um, you know. So uh, the the, the life affirming some of these, yeah, some of these, yeah. and you can guarantee that whoever makes the final squad, whoever goes over, they'll be friends for life. Yeah. I'm still in touch with some of the guys I went on tour with in yeah. 2018. I'm definitely in touch with some of the guys that I went to Italy with. Yeah. Um, and when you're in, when 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 you you're away with people you just get to know them a lot more yeah. and you feel like you're part of something, you know? So even though don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll never be that guy that's going to step on the pitch, um, you know, and score a winning try or put a pass in or make a tackle. Yeah. Cause I just get brushed off for starters. My tackling technique is awful, but, um, uh, if you still feel like you're part of something, uh, and that's important. That's really important. Yeah. It's. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one. I must admit. I think obviously the, the the from from my point of view is I know a lot of those players having you know sort of been involved with this show and and obviously the the, the youngsters as well. We know because of your interviews at Cesar, but obviously we're watching the open age game and watching these lads. Uh, so when I know a lot of these and and the the you know sort of straight away they stand out in, in in my memory. So I'm looking. Looking forward to see how these guys, uh, you know, perform. Well, obviously, you mentioned Leon Krellin as one mm. of them, who was one of the top try scorers in Division One last yeah. season. You know, it was very prolific for for for, for Egremont. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, a couple of other guys in the that um, you know, Danny Rouse, mm. vastly experienced halfback, brilliant kicking game. You know, one of the best community kicking games that you'll possibly see. Yeah. I think. Um, you know, and uh, you know, there's 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 other guys as well that I'm sure will put their hand up for selection as we get closer and start and the squad starts training together. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's really really good. And as I say, the fact that I can look at that and a lot of those names. You know, I automatically resonate with me. Does that, this show that, that we're doing a good job then? I think because, it is. you know, you're sort of like saying, I know that. I know of yeah, that player. Yeah. I know I of mean, that player. Yeah, I mean, uh, you go through those. I mean, see, I knew it was worthwhile doing the roundups of the NCL in the way that we have done over the last couple of years. Well, also, obviously, quite a lot of these uh, players have played in finals or big games. So yes. we, we, we've been and, and, and watched them. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's great to see uh, some of the names there. I must admit, it's great to see quite a few of the Egremont Rangers players there. That's uh, that's an, another thing as well. Uh, they announced an interesting partnership, didn't they? By the way, Egremont Rangers with a podcast. I'd have to be having a word with them about that. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, the more the merrier, as yeah, far as I'm concerned. So, yeah. You know, and, and and I love the fact that you know um, it puts the word uh, and puts the brand a little bit further on, doesn't it? The ve- they're very good at it. I must admit, they, uh, if there were a lot more, you know, sort of just had a look at what they were doing uh, and and take some, you know, sort of tips from them. You know, just sort of. Uh, help push their you know, all other clubs' brands forward. They would uh, won't go far wrong. I should also mention as well, um, and I didn't mean to, but they also played at the weekend, by the way, in the Jackie Davidson Memorial Trophy. Uh, did Egremont Rangers. They came up against uh, Hensingham, beat them by 14 points to four. And uh, uh, there is a quote here, which the club's put out from their new boss, Reese Davis. Mm. 
And he said, I thought we had a decent run out on Saturday in horrendous conditions against a young, enthusiastic Hensingham side. It took a while to adjust to the new rules, but once we got a foot into the game, we showed glimpses of what we can do, especially through our forwards. I hope that the consistency is there each week from the referees to be able to officiate to the standard they expect us to play. And that's where it's going to fall down. And that's no disrespect to referees, but that happens every single season with any new rules, doesn't it? It's Unless, unless you're getting a computer to do it, you're always going to have some sort of variation in the interpretation. Uh, but the bottom line is that I, I think after a couple of weeks, I think it'll settle down. Oh, I honestly do. I mean, I mean, some of the some of the talk that's been around oh, some of the, the rubbish, professional yeah, game yeah, at the moment yeah. is just completely rubbish. Uh, yeah. I, I do find it interesting that there's there's, there's talk of a, a renewed players union. You know, that's come onto the uh, onto the radar again. There is already a players union. You can join the GMB union. Yeah. There's representation already there. Now, if people want extra representation, they've already got a place where they can approach and something that they can mould. They don't have to reinvent the wheel and come up with another one. No, not at all. And we, like I think I, I, I uh, men- messaged because obviously we were having a, dis- a WhatsApp discussion on this, uh, and I said I'm sure Gareth Carvel was amongst that at one one spell. And didn't you say about? Uh, Wilkins being trying to get yeah he sta- he tried to start one yeah um you know but uh, you're right Gareth Carvel was actually a GMB rep I'm not sure whether he still is actually mm. he had a, a stint where he went to Lee uh, as like um, rugby manager or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah I remember then, that now yeah and then he, he left to go back to the uh, back to the union at That's that particular right. point yeah so um, but yeah uh, again one of uh, a number of talking points which there is knocking around the sport at Lots. this moment in time um, do follow us over the course of the season uh, you can catch us on Mixler at the weekend um, we've already put the uh, put the link out but uh, you can follow us on Twitter at 13 Proam RL, you'll find the link out on there. We'll post it again over the course of the week. Um, but Steve, absolutely brilliant being alongside you again, mate. Yeah, it's a short but uh, an important one. And I think uh, Saturday sort of will sort of kickstart our season because obviously after Saturday we, we we will then sort of wander into the season as a as a whole. Uh, and uh, just looking forward to. Uh, to the weekend, I, 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 as I've said to you before, I'm, I'm loving this trip myself. You know, the, just not just the, the Challenge Cup, but, but the fact that we're going to these places. This is an idea that we came up la- last year, uh, and you know, touch wood, people seem to embrace in what we're doing because we're enjoying what we're doing. Uh, and like Parky says, please get over onto Mixler. Uh, what I do now, if you've got the link, I go on the. Get yourself logged in, uh, get yourself a notification bell sorted out. So when uh, when we do get ready to uh, obviously start the game, you'll, you will get a notification to say, yeah, get, get clicked onto Mixler and, and have a listen to the game. Once you've done that, every time we go out and do a game, which is hopefully we'll try and do as regular as we can, uh, you will get notified. Do keep tuned and we'll see you again very, very soon on the 13 Pro Am Community Rugby League Show. Every tackle, every try, every scrum. Green Cooling is proud to be part of the Community Rugby League family.